Hi everyone, my name is Ian Cross. I'm part of the Vault Managed Services team here at Kaggle Australia. And today we are going to be discussing how to improve your engineering productivity with product data management and in particular OS Vault. Managing data is a non-value added task for engineers. So for every minute that you're trying to find a file, shuffling, renaming, correcting data that was overwritten or lost, you aren't doing what you're actually paid to do and that's design products. Okay, so today's sort of agenda is so the, is to help you identify some of the areas where you may be wasting time managing your product data and show you some ways which you can try and get that back. So we'll cover most of the common sources of productivity waste. We'll talk about product data management and how it can help you find your data faster. Um, we'll show you how to reuse your designs a bit more easily and work together better with your team. And then finally at the end, we'll have a bit of a demonstration with Autodesk Vault. Um, and then if you do have any questions at the end of it, please, not, please do give CAD Group a call or drop us an email and we'll be more than happy to help you. So to, to, to begin, let's talk about how much time is actually being wasted. So in a research uh, survey conducted by an analyst firm in the States called Tech Clarity, they found that engineers waste on average about 15% of their time on non-productive tasks. So the bottom quarter, which are the worst offenders, wasted 20% or more, which, actually, which adds up to one day every single week. So you know, this is something definitely worth addressing and I'm sure that all of us at some point have thought uh, you know that we wish there was more hours in the day when we're trying to get a, a project out the door so hopefully with this demonstration we're going to show you how to get some of that time back so before we show you how to improve let's have a look at where all this wasted time comes from so while there are many different sources I pulled together three of the most common areas where we lose time today um, the first is finding the right information when we need it. So in the report by Tech Clarity, 46% of the respondents noted that simply just finding the right information was a, was a significant issue. The next top thing was design reuse. So 29% of engineers reported that design reuse is a top three challenge um, that is just taking too much time. And then finally, 25% of people, um, 25% of engineers said that collaborating with internal colleagues and working with conflicting document versions was a significant problem. So we're going to have a look into these a bit deeper and identify um, how we can perform these tasks a little bit quicker. But before we do that, we need to find out why. Why is it that these activities are causing us a lot of problems? So the main, the main reason that we found is, well, if us and Tech Clarity in their, um, their research, is that Windows Explorer simply wasn't made for engineers. More to the point, it wasn't made to effectively manage CAD files um, in the environment that sort of, you know, development and product development is conducted in these days. But yet 57% of the people surveyed in the study noted that network and shared drives, i.e. Windows Explorer, is the primary tool they use for managing their design data. Okay, So let's have a look at how these three sources of wasted time we talked about manifest using Windows Explorer. So let's have a look at one of the first tasks, which is just finding the files when you need them. So let's say, for instance, we have 150 mil aluminium you know, gear. Uh, it was created by a colleague a few years ago for a different project. So how long do you think it would actually take for you to find that part since the only thing you can search for consistently in Windows Explorer is a file name? You can either hope that the, the guy who created it puts some of that information into the file name. It's either that or you're going to be stuffing around in possibly hundreds or thousands of project folders until you stumble across something. Now, although this is a relatively extreme problem, it's a very common example. Um, more often than not, you're try, just trying to find the file inside the current project, but even then you're sifting through folders that contain hundreds and thousands of different files, and that takes a lot of time. And think about how many files you need to, on a, any given day, and how long it takes you to find each one. If you could cut that down to less than 60 seconds for each one, that's going to save you a fair bit of time. Now, reusing existing designs. 
Okay, so using existing designs as a starting point to create an updated or a derivative um, product, it's a great way to save development time. However, the process of copying design files using Windows Explorer is not that efficient. The first problem you're likely to encounter is you're running into broken links. This can come about in a few different ways. Assemblies may reference the, the original parts. Renaming files are not found when you open up the assembly, or you may wind up with duplicate files or parts that are unchanged in the new design. You'll also need to deal with renaming the files that have been changed, more than likely one by one. And this it's not really a difficult task, it's just time consuming. And finally, it's quite hard to see the um, the downstream of any effects you know, of the changes. You know, what part is that assembly being used in? How many sub-assemblies is that part being used in? How many sub-assemblies, or how many assemblies are referencing that sub-assemblies? It's just, you can't, in Windows Explorer, you can't see what's referencing what. Now, reusing designs is still a great way of saving time, but the process shouldn't really undermine your productivity. Collaborating with the other engineers. Now, the degree of collaboration required to bring your product to market requires many different engineers needing access to the same data. Yet, Windows Explorer lacks a lot of the fundamental capabilities that engineers need to make working together easy. For example, there is no simple way in Windows Explorer to prevent people working on the project from accidentally overwriting your files in a shared folder. Now, to keep this from happening, you need some way of locking down your files when you're editing them. Your team also must be quite disciplined about properly maintaining the versions of designs. However, tasks that rely solely on discipline are likely to fail eventually due to a human error. Now, storing your files on a shared network folder creates additional issues, particularly with larger teams. A few dozen engineers opening files directly from shared folders and saving them often, which is, you know, is recommended. You should be saving your files as often as you can. This can strain the network capacity. Yet, yeah, I mean, if you pull the files down to your local computer, yes, this will reduce the traffic, but it creates more opportunities for data loss. It also makes it hard to find files, since they can be on the server, they could be on your hard drive, it could be a USB stick, and this brings up the age-old question, which is going to be very hard for your team to answer, which version is the most recent? If you've got files on your USB stick, on the server, on your hard drive, and somebody else has downloaded them, no one knows which one is the most up-to-date file. Now, to overcome these challenges, you need something like a file manager that is made just for engineers. It needs to understand the complexity of CAD file relationships. It needs to help you find the files you need when you need them. And it also needs to um, make it easy for you to collaborate with your colleagues. Now, PDM, or Product Data Management, exists just for this purpose. PDM is a strategy for managing your product-related information and engineering processes all within one single spot. Now, if we go back to the survey by Tech Clarity, they found that the top performers in manufacturing are 30% more likely to use some sort of PDM system than everyone else. Let's have a little look why. Now, the first step in a PDM strategy is to put all your files in one single spot. This means that you'll have to only have to look in one location. You're not going to have to worry about your files being spread across shared servers or shared files or individuals' workstations. Now, you can still use folders inside a PDM system to organize your data at a top level or within inside projects. So you still have that option to browse or search within a narrow set of data. And best of all, all the file-related properties are indexed and stored. Now that leads me on to my next point, which is about finding your data fast. Now, you can you can search for any file-related property since it's been indexed. Now, that allows you to filter down your results to just get what you need. So searching within PDM is faster because you can use that criteria that makes sense based on what you're trying to find. Now, going back to that previous example of the 150 mil aluminium gear created by one of your engineers in a previous project, you can use that information all at once to help you find that file. You're not just limited to searching for the file name. And finally, you can save those searches. This is extremely useful for everyday activities like viewing which files you're actively working on inside a current project or with specific properties. Now, PDM also removes that repetitive tasks and frustration involved with technical aspects of reusing your data. 
giving you more time to work on what's actually new in the design. Now, one of the most powerful tools that PDM provides is the ability to simplify design and use it in one single step. Once you've selected the top level assembly, every single file that is referenced in our assembly is identified and included in the copy operation. From there, you can pick and choose which files you want to copy, reuse or remove from the new project. And then you can define some sort of numbering scheme or naming scheme for renaming the copied files. Most important, all the file links are preserved during this operation. So regardless of how many files you've decided to copy, move or rename, you're not going to have to waste time resolving those links. So, PDM also helps you to remove the typical problems that can arise when multiple people are working on the same set of files. You get the benefit of collaboration without the loss of individual productivity. All concerns about overwritten files are solved with a simple yet fundamental capability, which is a check-in and check-out system. Just like your local library, when you check out a file, nobody else can touch it until you check it back in. It becomes read, essentially it becomes read-only. But while it's checked out, Everyone can still see the file, they can find the file, they can look at the file, and they can also see who's actively working on it, so you know which, which user to track down in case they want to make some sort of changes. Now, versioning capabilities keep track of all the changes you make during the design of the product while maintaining the same file name. It logs the who, what, and when behind each change, providing traceability and context for each update to the design. You know which version is the latest, and when paired with the checkout and check-in capabilities, versioning prevents conflicts from developing when multiple engineers are contributing to the same files within inside the project. Now, your data is best stored in a place with global access, but edits should be made locally. When you check out a file, it is faster and less draining on the network to download the file once to your local workstation. You save the locally as you you save the file locally as you edit the design and then you upload it back to the server as a new version when your changes are complete. This process helps protect against data loss because the original file still resides on the server. It also ensures that all files remain searchable and discoverable even when they're checked out. Now, I've talked about how PDM can provide some of those fundamental capabilities and can dramatically improve your productivity. Now, CAD Group's solution for product data management is called Autodesk Vault. Vault includes all of these capabilities I've just discussed, and that will help you improve your engineering productivity. It's important to know that it can do a lot more. Once you've got all that data in one location, there are many things you can do to improve your everyday processes, like your design reuse. You've got things like engineering change orders, or ECOs, product release systems, bills of materials, product customization, life cycle control, revision control, and item management. But all of this is too much to cover in one presentation, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and break that down into two separate presentations. But for now, let's have a quick look at Vault, and, and I'm going to have a, a quick go through things that you know we've just talked about, like your version control, reusing your design, file locking, renaming, um, and the searching capabilities within inside Vault. Okay. So... Let's pop over to my vault. Now, first thing I notice is that it's asking me to log into vault. So vault's quite secure. So vault sits on a server in your office, could be remote or locally, um, but it's password protected. You need a user account to get in. So when it's on Windows Explorer, the accounts department, the purchasing department, the receptionist can still stuff around and get into your filing system. You need a username and a password to get into vault. So only the people that you want to access the files can access the files. So I will log into my Vault. Now I am using Vault Professional here, but for this um, presentation I am just going to talk about the basics of Vault. So down the left hand side here I have my navigation pane. Now as we talked about earlier, you can still have a folder structure inside Vault. So you have a top level folder structure, then you can break it down into projects or topics or categories or whatever it is that you want to break it down to. It's up to you what folder structure you have. Now the files I'm going to work with today is just this little folder here. It's a fairly small assembly with just a few parts in the drawing. It's just basically a car wheel. Um, and I'm going to show you renaming, version control, copying, searching, that sort of thing. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply select a file. So I'm just going to select um, this 
Uh, we'll go with the badge, why not? Um, and I can see down the bottom here, I can see everything that's happened to that badge. I can see that there's 15 different versions. It's been checked in and checked out 15 times. And as it's gone through its life cycle, I can see all of the comments on the right hand side here. Let's see, for instance, added a fillet to the badge. I can see that somebody checked it out, it, it was me, and added a fillet to the badge. Okay, so you can see everything that happens at what stage. But also, let's say, for instance, this badge was created by me a few years ago, let's say, and somebody else logs in and goes, oh, you know, I need that, I need that badge that Ian created. Um, I don't know what he called it. I might have a, a quite a, a large vault. I'm not too sure what he called it, but in the system, it comes up as a, in the ERP system in SAP, it might come up as a part number of one uh, 0002. So I, I need some way of searching for that part number. Now, Windows in Windows Explorer, you can just search for anything that's in the file name. Now, if I come up to this little Find button here, this allows me to do an advanced search within Vault. Now, every file you bring into Vault has a heap of properties assigned to it, be it from Inventor, Inventor's I properties, or AutoCAD and its attributes. When the attributes come through or the I properties come through, they are mapped into Vault. So I've got things like the author, who created it, who was it checked in by, who was it checked out by, um, any comments made, a cost created by, the current owner, the date it was modified. But the thing I want to search for is the part number. And I can say, okay, I want to search for the part number 10002. I'm going to add that in, and then I can find it. And then it goes and finds me the badge for it. So not, you're not just searching on the part name. You're not just searching for the file name, you can search for actually internal properties of that, of that file. Who was it created by, what the cost is, when it was checked in, when it was checked out by. Now, I'm going to check out a few files as I go along. So I want to create a search. Generally, like on a, on a Friday night, when you, just before you go home, you want to search for all of your files to see what you've got checked out, and you want to be able to check them back in. So I want to do a search for all files checked out by me. So I'm going to go for a search for checked out by contains iCross. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that one. Fine. Now, at the moment, there's nothing checked out by me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this search. I actually might already have it saved, um, but I'll, I'll save it again. Um, if I go to save this current search, I'm going to call it checked out by iCross. Okay, so I've already got I've already got it checked out by me there, but I've, already, I've now got checked out by iCross. So at any point in time, I can come back and just click this folder, and it will tell me everything that I've got checked out. It will perform it will perform that search just by me clicking that button. Okay, so let, let's jump back to our BMW wheel, and I'm just going to check something out, modify it, and show you how it looks. If, for instance, if someone else was to come in and try and work with your file, so from Inventor. Make sure that I'm logged into Vault. I am. Just going to make sure my project file is active, which it is. And I am going to go to my Vault, and I'm going to open something from my Vault. Okay. So I'm going to open up, for instance, that badge. So we've seen before. Let's just double check. That badge had 15 versions. Okay. Now, also I mentioned when you check out a file, it brings a copy local to your workspace. Now I've dedicated a spot on my computer for where all my files to go to. So all my files will go to my F drive, then Vault, and they'll be put into this Designs folder. Okay, so there's nothing there at the moment. But if I check out this badge, click Open and Yes to check out, I always recommend putting in comments, so then you can always, you know, you can see exactly what happened at what stage. So I'm just going to say, Check out by I cross. Okay. And I've checked out that file ready for modification. If I look at my Windows Explorer now, you can see that I now have a folder called BMW Wheel and my badge is there. So I'm now working with this file locally. Okay? I'm not sending traffic across the server, across the network. Everything I'm doing is local. I'm saving it locally. I'm working with it locally. If I jump back to Vault, I can see that it's now got a little tick next to it. You can see that there's 16 versions now because I've checked it out. Um, it says that it's checked out by me. If I perform this search of checked out by iCross, you'll see that that will appear there. So I can see what I've got checked out. If I log in as somebody else, for instance, the administrator, as 
So if somebody else logs in at the bottom and goes, I need to make a change with that file, I go to my designs, cut my bay under the wheel, and there's a big line through it. So they go, OK, what's happened? Oh, iCross has got it checked out. So then they can say, OK, I need to go speak to Ian because I need to go make a change to that file. I can see exactly that. I can see that he's got that file checked out. I can still see the file. I can still see the properties of that file. I could get a read-only copy of that file if I wanted, um, but I can't check it out for edit because it is read-only. It's checked out to iCross. So I'm just going to, again, I'm going to log out. Log back in with me. Back into Vault. Back into Inventor. I'm just going to make a change to that fillet. So let's just say I'm going to edit this feature. And let's change it from a 2 mil to a 1.5 mil radius. OK. Not too much of a drastic change. Save it. Remember, I'm saving it locally. And then I'm going to check the file back in and check in. OK. Changed. Fillet to 1.5 millimeters. Now I've got this thing here tick, close files and delete working copies. Now there's no right or wrong with having that ticked or unticked. But what that'll do is once the file, once I click OK to check the file back into Bolt, it will close down the file in my inventor and it will delete it from my local workspace. So you can see here that there is that badge file. If I click OK to check it in, you'll see that it closes down the file from inventor. If I go back to my BMW wheel file's gone. It's checked the file in. Okay, So I jump back to Vault. And if I go to my BMW wheel, you can see that the file is checked back in. And there's that comment change fillet to 1.5 mil. So you can see at every point and stage what has been done. And you've got that traceability. You can see who checked it out. So if I click on, say for instance, this one here, I can see it was checked in by, I can see it was checked out, I can see what was done, I can see the comments. You can see as I go through the 16th of the 4th, 16th of the 4th, that one was the 13th of the 4th, that was done a few days ago. So you can see each individual version and variation of the file at each point in its life cycle. Okay, now... All of the files are in one location, as like I mentioned before. It's easy for it to search. You don't have to be stuffing around. Oh, did the save files on the S drive? Did I save the files on the P drive? Or is it in is it in Ian's folder? Is it in John's folder? There's, there's no you're checking each other's folders to see who is working on the files. Everything is stored in one particular location. Okay. Now, renaming the files. So, for instance, this is a big task in Windows Explorer. If you were to if you were to open this BMW wheel assembly in Windows Explorer, it would open all the files great. But then, let's say, for instance, I wanted to change that badge to be BMW badge. It'll then put its hands up in the air and say, hang on a minute, I've got no idea where badge is gone. I'm looking for badge. I can't find it. But if you do it from Vault, so let's, for instance, let's, let's open up the assembly to start with. If I go open, open up my BMW wheel. It finds all the files. Great. So there's my BMW access, my BMW wheel, my badge. You know, all the files have opened up the file. Okay. Let's just check that back into Vault. Okay. No change made. Okay. Now, if I jump back to Vault and let's say, for instance, I'm going to rename my badge. So I go to rename. Next. And I'm going to call it BMW badge. OK. Finish. OK. It's renamed my badge to BMW badge. That's great. Now, if I was to do that on Windows Explorer, I'd be oh, where's that badge used? Was it used in, was it used on the BMW wheels, the Ford wheels, the Holden wheels? Where was that? You'd have to trace, try and find everywhere that file is used. What I can do from within here is if I go to just the where use tab, I can see that that file is only used in the BMW wheel assembly. So I can see everything. I can see everywhere that that file goes. Exactly every sub-assembly, every part, everything where that file is used. Alternatively, I can go to the BMW wheel assembly and look at uses, and I can see exactly what that BMW wheel is referencing. So if I was to change the name of the BMW wheel, I can see everything that it references. Okay. So now if I go back to Inventor, and if I open up the same assembly, 
you can see that it's still using that BMW, sorry, you can see that it's now using the BMW badge. It's automatically updated all the references, again, saving you a whole heap of time. You don't have to try and find exactly everywhere that it's gone. Now, I didn't check that file out there. I just opened that as read-only, so I don't need to check it back in. Okay, so I've talked about the version control. So you're checking in and checking out. It locks the file to your name. Nobody else can see it. Sorry, people can still see it, but nobody else can use it. It's locked to your name, yet they can still look at all the different versions. We've looked at our renaming. We've talked about all of our files being in a single source. We've looked at the search capability. So now we're going to talk about reusing our design. So let's say, for instance, a job comes in, and I'm doing a job for Ford, let's say. And I want to basically copy my BMW wheel and rename it to be a Ford wheel. Then I want to make a few modifications. Okay. So there is a, there is a tool in Vault called Copy Designer. Okay. So I select the top level assembly. Now it's, it allows me to either copy or reuse the file. If I copy the file, it'll create a new copy. As you can see, it's got a new file in there with um, a suffix of number two. And if I reuse a file, pretty much nothing happens to the file. It just creates a link back to the original source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse, I'm going to copy all of these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prefix it. Or actually, let's just change that. I'm going to change the name to be Ford. Okay, let's just grab that copy there. Because I want to get rid of that. Ford Axis. I'll just copy and paste. I could use the prefix tool, but I want to get rid of the BMW bit. Okay. So I prefixed it with Ford, which I'm happy with. I tell it where I want the design to go. I'm going to say Ford wheel. Click OK. Um, I don't want that prefix in there. And I'm happy with what I've chose. I click OK. It goes and copies and creates all the new links for me. And now inside my Ford wheel, I have a whole new assembly. Okay, There is no link back to the original BMW files. I now have a brand new design ready to go make changes. Um, it's back to revision A. There's only one version. It's, a, it's pretty much a brand new file. But the BMW wheel is kept intact. You know, let me say there's no uses or where used back to those Ford files. It still contain, contains the whole history of the BMW files, and it's created me a brand new assembly. Now, let's say, for instance, I'll just create, I'll create another one, and I'll create, say, for instance, um, an Audi wheel, let's say. So, let's go back into my copy design, and I'm going to reuse some and copy some different ones. So, let's, we're going to make a new assembly, because it's going to be an Audi wheel, but we're going to use the same axis, and the same wheel. We're just going to change the badge and the, the main assembly. Okay. And let's just put Audi in there. Audi in there. Okay. And I'm going to stick it in here, create a new folder and call it Audi wheel. Okay, so it creates me a new folder called Audi wheel. Click OK. OK does what it needs to do. Inside my Audi wheel, I only have the two parts that I copied. But if I was to open up this file here, it still references sorry, the BMW axis and the BMW wheel because I set those to be reuse. Okay. So the basic tasks that I've just done there, which is your copy design, um, which is reusing your design. Now, that, that would have took a hell of a lot of time because that, although I've only got one assembly here, you could have had... 15, 20 assemblies, and you you know, that badge could be used in 13 different sub-assemblies, and you've got to go through, oh, do I need to reuse it here, do I need to copy it there, and there's a lot of kind of thinking you've got to do. Vault takes that away. Um, there's your version control. So, every check-in and check-out, create a new version, um, and you can see exactly what happened at those versions, who did what, when, and why. Um, you've got your file locking, so when you check out a file, it brings it locally to your local machine and then allows you to work with it fast on your local machine, but nobody else can get access to it. They can see it, they can read it, they can look at it, they can't make changes to it. You've got your searching, so every single file that you check in brings all of its inventor properties or its AutoCAD attributes, and they're indexed as they come in. Uh, so they're searchable, as we've seen before when we search for checked in by, checked out by, the part numbers, 
There's a whole heap of things that you can search by. Um, that's pretty much it for the, the, the basic sort of imp some improving your productivity with Autodesk Vault. Um, if you guys do have any further questions on anything that I've done here, please do get in touch with Card Group or myself. Again, my name is Ian Cross. Um, I'm part of the Vault Managed Services team here at Card Group. So if you do have any questions, uh, please do get in touch. And thank you for watching. Thank you.